Hello, and welcome to Motivation Speaks with author Angel Ferguson. We thank you for tuning in as this is our official debut of Motivation Speaks with author Angel Ferguson. Please check out our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. For author Angel Ferguson. On our official debut, we are going to discuss purpose, goals, and dreams. Learning to value you. It brings me great pleasure to share in this moment with you as you discover or become introduced to your purpose in life. What we are going to do during this segment is interact with each other. Please feel free to email me at angel at angelfergusonswordprocessing.com. To begin with, I believe the first step in any process is to face the reality of where you are in life. Accept your past for what it was, allow it to teach you, and appreciate what it has taught you. And I can tell you this is no easy process, but it is necessary in order for you to move forward in life. So I employ you to take a breath, relax, And together we're going to remove the layers that have held us back and bound from becoming who we were destined to become. Here is one thing to keep in mind during this process. The longer you continue to hold on to the things that have held you captive, you are holding up the process of someone else. Let's dig in. I really appreciate you allowing me to become a part of this journey with you. And as I always close out a morning inspiration, stay encouraged as you encourage others along the way. When it comes to purpose, goals, and dreams, there are some questions that I'm quite sure we all will come across. The number one being, how many of you have learned of your purpose, meaning the reason why you were created? Another question would be is, does your dreams line up with the purpose that God has for you? If after you have gone to God to find out this purpose for you, then your dreams should mirror that purpose. And I know a lot of people put emphasis on purpose, but purpose is really the thing you have a passion about that you love to do and you find that it is edifying unto others, that it brings out the best in others. Does it edify God in some way, shape or form? That is your purpose. If you are a stylist or a beautician, think of it as of this way. You are helping someone present their best. You are helping them to define who they are. You're just doing your portion. You're not doing the entire job. You're doing your portion as one plants, one waters, but it is God that gives the increase. Once you have learned of your purpose, the next thing to do is to accept it. This is not easy to do as well. I encourage you to start the learning process as your journey will soon begin. Understand that God has a greater purpose for our lives that will reach beyond being mom or dad, granddad or brother. That is your first commission. 
but there is so much more to your life than that. Our purpose is really to inspire others to learn of their purpose in Christ. So as I share and I uplift and I encourage you, I do it unto Christ and I encourage you to learn who he is, accept him as you find your purpose and so forth. I often tell people never to lose your dreams within your status. Some of us have hung up our dreams because we became wife and mother or grandmother. But I believe that that passion is in you for a reason. And every day you should take steps to keep that passion alive and to cultivate it and allow it to grow. Some people will back up on a dream because they are thinking, I can't do this financially or it's too much work, I don't have time, I don't have the education, I won't be accepted. But when you are moving as God would have you to move, he says, despise not small beginnings. So you have to take a step somewhere. Baby steps. A little bit at a time until you're ready to move to the next level of bigger steps. But as long as you're moving, that's the most important thing. Something to consider as you are pursuing your purpose, goals, and dreams is to know that you are an example of your children. You are an example to your children. I believe that role models should be from within the home. It's okay to admire those we come in contact with, but when I'm looking for a mentor and I'm looking for inspiration, I want to be able to look at my mom and dad. I want my children to be able to see mom as a role model. I do more than go work to bring home groceries and to cook those groceries. I'm a mentor. I pursued my purpose. I followed my dreams. I made them into a reality through the guidance of God. That's what I want my children to see. That's the legacy I want to live with my grandchildren. That is something that you should consider. Throughout your life, we all go through things and we think, no one is going to listen to me, but I want to tell you, never assume that you have nothing to share. Every day we go through things and maturity will lead us and guide us on how to handle those things. That is something to share because we come across people and they are experiencing the same things we have gone through and they don't know how to handle it. But then that comes back to that purpose of inspiring and being a guide so that you went through some things and you felt like you could not get through them and you thought, why me? But I am here to tell you that that why me was not about you. It was about who God was going to have you cross paths with. That is a purpose. We are taught that we overcome by the words of our testimonies. I know that the more that I share and give what God allows me to share and give, I am being released of some things that have held me captive. And in the same token, I am helping someone else who is approaching 
or is in the middle of. And they're seeking an answer. And I am so glad that I am obedient to be in those places. And afterwards, I'm thinking, hmm, I didn't know I was ready to share that. But when you hear someone say, I'm there now for something that you experienced 10 or 12 years ago, and you can share with them the things that you learned by the mistakes you made, not the mistakes the other person made, the mistakes you made. That, my dear, is purpose. That is inspiring someone else. Never hold those things to yourself as God would allow you to share. Share. You could be saving a life. You could be encouraging someone to pursue their purpose. You never know where a person is. And like I said, the more you give of those things, the more you remove those layers, the more you can receive of God's goodness, his peace, his love, his joy, his happiness, the more you will understand the long suffering, the more you will come into the knowledge of why you were created. That's awesome. I absolutely love that. Another thing that I like to look at is, is are you operating at your full potential? It's my passion. Am I giving it my all? How can I expect my goals and dreams to become a reality if I do not operate at my full potential? And then again, we have those who want to jump from zero to 50 without listening and waiting and preparing. And I find that when we do this, we don't have a solid foundation. It's unstable. And when the wind comes and the wind blows, we're moved, we're shaken. But if you wait on instructions to pursue your purpose, you will reach your goal. But you must wait. And in your waiting, you are to learn and gather information, study thyself approved. So when it is time for you to step out in the gate, you're equipped. It's nothing more daunting than to get into the wilderness and search, then search for a map. But if I set out with some instructions and I have a compass and knowing where I am going, my journey won't be so hectic. It won't be so frustrating because I got an idea of where I am going. Purpose, goals, and dreams is designed to make us think where I was, where I am, and where I have the potential of going. Purpose, goals, and dreams also is designed to help us remove the layers of tradition. What am I holding on to? Is it truth that I'm holding on to? It's designed to cultivate you. 
on a recent seminar, I asked the question, do you believe that God wants the best for you? And if you believe he wants the best for you, then why are you not pursuing his best? What are you really afraid of? I've heard several things. I've heard people say that they are afraid of success. They are afraid of the success of money. But I want you to take money out of the equation and a portion of your fears will subside. We can develop a fear of something that we have no knowledge of. Purpose. When we come to Christ, the first lesson to learn is that he loves you for you. He died on the cross simply because he wanted you to have a better life. With that being said, he knew that you were going to face some things and needed a way out, that you needed a new life. I would like to think about the word of deliverance. In order to understand and operate in your purpose fully, we must be delivered of the mindset of not wanting to know our purpose. I've come across people who did not even think about or or. or they had no knowledge that they had a purpose. Most people will make you think that deliverance is only about the ungodly choices you have made. Deliverance also covers the traditional things that were passed down and spoken over us that were not of God. When we come to Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior, we become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Now here comes the deliverance, the removal of the layers of traditions, the perceptions of who and what your parents taught us about God, knowing that they taught us what they were taught with no one really learning of the truth about who God really is and what we really mean to him. In other words, there was no revelation. Purpose, goals, and dreams calls for discipline. Without it, you are on a merry-go-round of practicing a hobby. I have three questions for you. Write them down. If you'd like a copy of the questions, email me at angel at angelfergusonswordprocessing.com and I will email you these questions. Number one, what is the one thing that you have desired to do that you have placed on the back burner of your mind? Number two, give me five reasons why you did not pursue those dreams. Number three, now tell me how you plan to bring that dream back to life and make it into a reality. Once again, if you would like a copy of these questions, please email me at angel at angelfergusonswordprocessing.com or if you would like a written portion of our segment, email me and I will send you over a copy. Before we close, on this section, I'd like to close with this. According to Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may readeth it and run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It shall not tarry. I want to encourage you to write your vision. Create the plans that, be go, that go beyond your imagination. In other words, learn to move beyond your capabilities. Take a look at the unlimited skies and begin to put pen to paper. As you are writing your vision, you must be careful not to share it with everyone. 
only share this with whom God allows you to share it with. And if you are looking for a good outline, I always take a business plan because it, it is the same outline for a vision. That's all a vision is, is your business plan. I believe that as you begin to write these things down and put them into perspective, the next process would be to start making steps daily to accomplish the things that are on your vision plan. What you are working towards is the bigger picture, the fulfillment of the vision. If you are wondering how to get started, I encourage you to first seek God, learn of his purpose for you upon this earth, once you learn of your purpose, that thing that you desire to do should mirror with the purpose that God has for your life. The next process is to learn about your purpose. Yes, study to show yourself approved. Here is a key to remember and to understand. Somebody else will, will be able to do that thing that you have a passion about. But you were created uniquely. And what God gave you, he gave it to you in your own unique way. What God has you to do, he ordained you to do. And what the other person is doing, he ordained them to do it their way. Never compare yourself to anyone. When we compare ourselves to someone else, we're telling God that what you did is not good enough. That is a slap in God's face. Learn to appreciate you. Learn to value you. You are uniquely and divinely made. You are above and not beneath. You are so precious in the sight of God. If you would gain the concept of that, you will begin to seek your purpose. There is no lack in you. You are not what your past defined you to be or the negative words or even the negative thoughts that you have for yourself. I encourage you to be renewed by the spirit of your mind tonight. Change the way you see you. Ask God to allow you to see you the way he sees you. So as we bring this session to a close, write your visions, make them plain. If you need a copy of a vision plan or would like a full transcript of tonight's session, please feel free to email me at angel at angelfergusonswordprocessing.com. Follow us on Facebook under author Angel Ferguson Ferguson for our morning inspiration segment. You can also reach out to us on Google Plus as well as on Twitter. We look forward to hearing from you. We want to make motivation speaks about the things that are, are important to you as you are reaching your goals and pursuing your purpose that's our purpose is to make sure that we are available to you to help you reach your next level in this life thank you once again for joining us for our official debut of motivation speaks have a great night stay encouraged encouraging others along the way author angel ferguson bye-bye